Lions TV, it's a post-match analysis video for Saturday's 4-0 hammering of Norwich at the Den. Sorry, the video's gone out a bit later. All the lights, my new work job situation is, is killing it a bit, but the videos will continue to go out. Obviously, due to my new job, I, was, I woke up in Kettering on Saturday morning, left there at 10 a.m., was on, was on track to hit the Den at 1 p.m., carnage, traffic, M25, M40, sick of it. Got to the Den at two minutes past three, saw the game, dropped me in my home, Got one video out and another one ready to go for Sunday. And then I was back to the Cotswolds to go to work again. I didn't get in until about 5 o'clock Sunday morning. Watched the McGregor fight. Went to bed about 7 in the morning. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's very long hours at the minute. But the videos will continue. Don't worry about that. I'll do my best I can to get to every game. Still will every league game at least. But yeah, it was well worth the journey. Well worth the travelling. Our first win of the season. Let's take a look at the 11 that started. Starting 11 was unchanged for the third league game in a row. Also, a second clean sheet in a row in the league. And I've got to say it, I forgot to say it in my post-match. Jordan Archer was absolutely superb on Saturday. Listen, you can, I've not got nothing against the geezer. I want him to do so, so well. And, and sadly, he did. He did, he, did, so he did do very well. But he's only doing what I'm expecting my goalkeeper. Some, some good saves. One very good save. Norwich came flying out of blocks at us on Saturday. It was, you know, looked like he was going to be up against it. They're a good, experienced championship club. But Jordan Archer done his job at one end. And then 15 minutes in... The general flicks one on. Lee Gregor on his 29th birthday gets inside the box and a lovely finish into the corner. Really settles the nerves, gets him off the mark for the start of the season. And all of a sudden, where's all the hate gone for the front two? I told you, listen, Tom Elliott for us is going to be a good signing. He's going to be effective, but long term, he's not going to be the saviour. That's, that's all I'll say on that one. For now, let's stick with what we've got. Let's stick with what we know. Steve Morrison and Lee Gregory do it year in, year out. And, and I'm telling you now, they're going to do it again this year for us. Two minutes later, another breakdown of right from my man of the match, Jeb Wallace. For me, Savile played well, but Jeb was at the centre of absolutely everything and just absolutely full of confidence running at the heart of people. And that, listen, no matter what league in the world you're playing, if you get the ball and you run up some of the confidence, they're not going to like that. Ball goes into the box. Looks like it goes too far and the move's dead. And listen, for all you AOB haters, Aiden Onionbag, that is why he's in the team over Shane Ferguson. He is so composed in and around the box, whether he's shooting, whether he's setting something up. And he just lays the ball back to George Savile, who slots home for his second goal of the season on 17 minutes. We're 2 0 up, we're in dreamland. What a sign he is, by the way, George Savile. How good must Wolves be to get rid of him and Jeb Wallace? They must be a frightening side because we've got two very, very good players there. The killer blow in the final now in Norwich's coffin come right on a stroke of half time, 43 minutes. Jeb Wallace gets the ball out wide left, cuts inside, beats two defenders, and slots past Angus Gunn from the edge of the area. Angus Gunn, son of former Norwich goalkeeper Brian Gunn, by the way, should be saving that all day long. But listen, good luck to Jed. Got the goal he deserved. And without doubt, Lions TV, man of the match. Jed Fernley Wallace. Go on, the Fern Dog. So you're half time, 3 0 up. Great position to be in. Felt like game over. But as we all know with me, you, you can never guarantee that. It's never game over till it's over. So to come out in the second half, we had more and more chances. I remember Morrison volleying wide. I remember Aiden O'Brien missing, missing a one from close range. I'm not the young and bagged that. But it was sealed. Sean Williams corner and a basic header really from Sean Hutchinson. Bad, bad marking defensive work from Norwich. But Sean Hutchinson rises like a salmon. We see him do it before Bristol Rovers away at the back end of the last season that put us into the playoffs. And Sean Hutchinson seals the deal. 4-0. We've beaten Norwich at the den. Fantastic result over the moon for the team to get that win before going into the international break. Because when we come back from the international break, we've got some tough fixtures coming up. We've got Wolves away. We've got QPR away midweek. And then after that, obviously, we've got Leeds at home. So no easy games coming up for us. But listen, this league is where we want to be. It's where we need to be. I think a lot of us saw a hammering for someone coming. So yeah, it was a win. It was an emphatic win. One that may surprise a few. But I'll tell you now, I don't think any team that's played us already this season will be shocked at that result. We've, we've dominated every game we've played. We don't look out of our depth. And, and the manager's gone playing. He really has. We've really... Turn, we've really turned the screw now and we're, we're pushing right on. And I'm expecting big things from this season. I, I really am. We're going to be comfortable. At least I'm not saying we're going to go up, we're going to be in the playoffs, but I expect us to be comfortable. And I think that sets our stall out now. We've got three very difficult games in a row. As I've already said, there is no easy games in this league, but we are away to Wolverhampton Wanderers, then away to Queen's Park Rangers. And then after that, we will be at home to Leeds. So no easy games, but the players are relishing the minute. You can see they're buzzing. You can see that there's a, there's a great feeling in the camp. Good to see Ryan Tunneycliffe coming on towards the end. On the flip side of that, Ben Thompson and, and Callum Butcher. Listen, I'll be amazed if Callum Butcher doesn't leave the club in the, before the transfer window in the next few days. 
Ben Thompson, I'd love to see him stay and fight for his place. I love Tom O'Meal through and through. And I, I don't think he'll ever be as effective as another club that he would be at Mill because you can see how much the club means to him. And I really think he deserves his chance in this league. I also think Marlon Romeo deserves his chance in this league. I've been surprised to see him not even make the bench a couple of times, I've got to be honest. I like McLaughlin, I do like McLaughlin, but I don't think there is anything that he's doing that Romeo can't do. But listen, it's good competition for places. He's done well, McLaughlin, I'm not knocking him. Very impressive. Meredith, George Savile, I've already covered. Sean Williams, you know, we're looking good absolutely throughout. Strength in depth, which is something we didn't have so much of last year. So that's it, that's your post-match analysis done. No game this week, obviously, because of the international break, unfortunately. England v Malta or some shit. Who's even going to watch that? I oh, know I'm not. Work's busy, but I'll try and get some VTs out, maybe do a QA. and uh, There'll definitely be a weekly run-up in there somewhere. But that's it, yeah. Thanks for watching, and I will see you at Molyneux in two weeks' time if you're going. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.